Okay, so showing you basically the basics of the Plinko machine to instantiate how to destroy. Um, let's start with, so we're going to build a projectile. Um, we're going to create a new mono behavior script. Uh, and I'm going to just call it combat projectile for our purposes. Closer to the speed of normal. Um, and then we're also going to build another behavior script. It could be our combat player. Let's jump over to the combat scene. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start. Uh, you know, we'll we'll make the, the, the smaller player. We'll start with the tank, because it'll be more interesting. We'll jump into our lab six folder. All right. So this is my combat player. All right. I am going to. Zero, 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 start off. Okay, so the tank basically is set up so that I can put the, com I can, I can, it already has the rigid body, already has the, the freeze, freeze rotation. So I'll just bring in the script, the combat player. And I'm going to, um, unpack the whole thing. So I'm going to unpack the whole thing so I don't have to worry about it being related to, you know, changes here to, um, the, 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 the rigid body. Um, let's go back to just combat just for a moment. And we'll just say, just rename this tank uh, model. Just so that we know that that's the original prefab. All right. So the combat player, we're going to, uh, we'll edit the script. Need any of the Plinko stuff. Um, we do need to go back to where did I put it? Put it in software. So here's the rigid body model. We're gonna start by grabbing all of this. We're gonna I'm gonna start by grabbing everything in here and I'm gonna copy it. So basically that my, we're going to start basically with, hey, the combat player is going to have everything the rigid body can work with. Um, inputs. We are going to add bool, um, fire one, and bool. Theory, these fire and fire two would probably be north, south, east, west weapons. But right now we're using. Um, actually, I don't want to use. I'm going to remap these. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to remap these. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to have a vector two. Stick to zero vector <coughs> to right thumb stick to dot zero. So I'm going to remap the WSA keys to the left and right thumb stick. So left thumb stick is going to be basically going to be the uh, uh, forward value, the forward, um, it's going to control forward and backwards, and right now, right thumb stick is going to control rot rotation. So we need to jump down here, and we also need to also to using Unity uh, Engine Input System.
So this is going to get interesting. Get into the scenario if um, so. What I want to do is basically I want to set a, a vector. Make it void clear inputs, and I am I'm I'm probably complicating this in a more, but this this will this will be clear as we move forward. This will help gamepad support. So vector, uh, sorry, um, left thumbstick is going to be vector two dot zero. Right thumbstick is going to be equal to vector two dot zero. North button. North button is equal to false. South button is equal to false. Uh, east button, false. And west button is equal to false. This will be. So I'm going to clear the inputs. Uh, this is still correct. Um, but what we're, we're going to do, if I put this into a state right away, if that's pressed, then um, my left thumbstick dot y is going to be equal to 1. S key is pressed, left thumbstick dot Y is going to be equal to negative 1. If the A key is pressed, we're going to go to the right thumbstick. That will be negative 1. And then the E key is pressed. Left tight, left right is positive one. And then we can go um, we're not going to assign the north button. Uh, so, so we're going to do south and east. So north and west button are going to be Unassigned right now. So south button is equal to uh, the Q key, and this is going to be was pressed this frame. Q key was pressed this frame, and then the east button is going to be the E key. So now I need to grab this basically and copy it over to player two. So this is going to be I, K, J, L, and then the fire keys are going to be U. So now that we've done that, we need to go up, and this is actually going to throw, we can throw, um, we don't have to ask per button, we can just do now move player, and it's going to be the left thumbstick dot Y, and then we can go do rotate player, right thumbstick dot
And then we can do if self button. And then we need to make two, two functions. So I'm going to do fire projectile. Uh, we'll, we'll just void fire one. Actually, this will be spawn projectile. Then we'll have a void fire two. This one is going to be void uh, perform raycast. That we'll talk about in a future lab. So fire one basically is going to spawn the projectile. And fire two basically is going to perform the raycast. I could have gone directly to these functions, but I'm going to use keep the fire one, fire two. So up here, our south button is going to use going to be fire one, and then if east east button, fire two, and we're going to go in just down into fire one, fire two. We'll just do a debug dot log fire one. Copy that and put that in here in fire two. So that we are test that we are validating that we're getting our inputs. So let's show go back into Unity for the moment. Uh, we'll go to player script. Missing in here right away uh, will be a public game object um, projectile um, Okay. So let's just go uh, save that. We can close the rigid body mover. Come back here. Press play. It's generally about stuff that we haven't assigned, but it's okay. Input number should work. There we go. So there we go. Movie. Fire one, then fire two. Projectile. I map these to, to the X, to the Y, so this should be X. That's why I'm not getting a rotation. Okay. There we go. Of course, my move speed is slow. I'm going to crank it up to 20. There we go. That feels a lot better. More nimble. In fact, we can actually crank this up even more. What was that? Eh, I, I, this is our Katie. This is a super. Yeah, this is this is super tank. This is this is. Um, we're definitely here working with the tank. Uh, we're dealing with arcade tanks, so we're not not too worried. Okay.
um, in my prefabs. Actually, I'm just going to create, I'm going to just create a new, let's call this the tank. Um, and I'm actually going to call this um, player one for our purposes right now. Player two will be something else. So um, I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to create uh, a sphere. And where is the sphere? And move it up okay so I am definitely going to keep the let's make it half its size I think I like it's not bad I'll keep it keep that so we probably want it to so here at 2.5 um, I'm going to go in again to give it, no, that's, there we go. Uh, let's go to pure. I'll be okay. So here is going to be my tank projectile. And this is going to be the prefab. All right. Let's go back to our lab six. And we have a combat um, projectile projectile okay let's let's go in and let's set that up now uh, we will add a rigid body to it and the spirit it will actually be a trigger so there we go so let's go to the projectile okay so the first thing that we want to know um, is a public int damage value. We'll set that to we'll set that to 50. Uh, do a public uh, float lifespan. We'll set that to six seconds. Um, and then a public float move speed. Um, we'll set that up to be, uh, say 50 for, well, we'll do, tw we'll do 20. We will also need a rigid body reference RB. And so, and everything, a lot of this is gonna be set up in, into the start function, so RB, um, is going to be equal to uh, game object get component the rigid body rb dot uh, linear velocity is going to be equal to our um, game object dot forward uh, sorry transform dot forward times our move speed. And then we also now know the last thing we also need to do here as well is basically do a uh, destroy. It's going to be the game object and the lifespan. So this is so if for some reason something happens, it goes out of the world um, after six seconds, it's going to remove itself. Now we can destroy the object before that, like, and that's one of the things that's going to happen is right now um, we're not even going to need an update for right now. But we do need on trigger enter. And basically right now we are going to do a just dis destroy the game object. We'll worry about being pretty later on. But basically if we hit, any, we hit anything, we're going to destroy the game object. All right, let's come back to our combat player. One of the things that we are going to need, besides the projectile prefab, we are going to need a public game object uh, projectile. I'll do. We'll call it barrel end. All right. So let's go back to Unity and let's go take a look at the tank. All right. 
we're going to actually add an empty object. We'll call it the barrel end. And we're going to move this basically where the projectile is. So that needs to be 2.5. So again, the pivot and the barrel end are going to overlap, are going to be at the same point here. Um, again, we're going to take the, this and we're going to create in our combat folder the projectile prefab. So if we press play, you're going to see this shoot off. And yeah, it's already dead. So let's just go to the projectile just quickly. Um, we're just going to do a debug dot log hit other dot game object dot name and I need to put a plus sign in okay so we'll go back to unity and we'll press play so go to the console window. And you need the tank projectile prefab hit gray floor. So what happened, what we forgot, let's go take a look at the, the tank pr projectile prefab. Um, on the ridge body, we forgot to turn off use gravity. So it went forward and lunged into the floor. All right, so for our game, we're not going not gonna to need gravity uh, for our purposes. So we'll press play. It will go, and this time, it hit the outer wall, which is this piece. If we open up uh, outer wall, it is moving. Uh, not no, it's okay. North. It is it is small on the screen, so I'm going to name the outer walls. South, West, East. So that we know which wall, wall it is. And we don't need, this is just the, the floor. So we go and press play. And it, it, again, it is hard to see. Um, let me, let's bring the arena down in size again. Let me 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then we will go to the main camera, go to 12, and there you go, you can see it better, hit the wall. So now what, basically what we need to do now is now that we've set that up, let's go to the combat player. And we'll, we'll just go to the spawn projectile. And again, this is going to be instantiate. This is going to be our um, projectile prefab. And then the location is going to be uh, barrel end dot transform dot uh, position. Barrel end transform dot uh, rotation. Again, this is getting the global position of these things. I'll just save this right here, and then I'll go back. We're gonna actually. Did I miss something? Oh, there we go. Semicolon. So. I'm now going to take, uh, let's go back to the project window. I've created, let me just check this is, yeah, turn this, this use gravity off in here. I don't need the projectile on the map anymore because we're going to start spawning it. So I'm going to go to the player. I'm going to grab the barrel end object and assign that here because that's the up piece on the, on the tank. And then on the, the projectile, I'm going to bring the, the object in here. We'll press play. And then you can see I am spawning uh, 
and I really should bring bring this up to 10. So one thing that could be happening, like if you're moving, let's 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 crank this up to 30, just so that we have an idea. So if I move forward, I am actually running over my projectiles. So just be, be mindful. Two things that could happen is that, again, I lined up the barrel end to be where, again, where the, the original projectile was. I lined that up so that I was not in collision with anything in my objects. Um, one thing that you could potentially do is go in here and turn off the capsule, capsule collider on this. That allows me to bring the barrel end actually in closer. Two. So I do that. I can fire. So just make sure that when you're you're when you're spawning them these things like this in, um, you're not overlapping with something in them, and it's causing them to d destroy right away. So uh, let me just check our how far we're going this week. Fire one, fire two. Uh, we. Another function that in the pl combat player that we need to write as well, um, and I'll do this after, is going to be avoid uh, reset. Uh, reset uh, player. There's, I think there's another uh, reset function that we're colliding against. So uh, later on, we will, we, we're, we're not going to do any, I mean, basically it is, um, we're not going to write this as this week, but in the future lab, we will, we will need this. Let's just take a look what else. I'll go through and, yeah, reset. Can we down... Down to these, just to... um, there is two booleans that I haven't brought into the mix yet, and that's um, public boolean uh, fire one is enabled, and I'm just going to set these. Oops, wrote out boolean. And then there'll be a fire two is enabled, and these are going to be true for right now. Later on, we will we will use these to shape um, what 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 character fires in what ways. Um, down here, basically, it is what we want is south button and fire one is enabled, and then on the east button, in this case, we want that and fire two is enabled. So again, later on, we'll use these to turn these on and off. Right now, we'll, we'll, we're going to build both the projectile types um, in one in the in one class, and then we'll we'll shape them later on. And this is like lab eight cleanup. We'll save that. Let's see what else I need to do. Yeah, I said create a capsule person using this script. Um, We'll, you, we'll do the capsule person later on. We'll get the tank up and running, doing what it needs to do, and then we'll come back and we'll um, build the capsule person. Because it won't. Because once we've got the tank, the capsule will be easier. Um, extra credit for fire one. Uh, write code that enforces a cooldown for each weapon before firing again. Uh, write a reset function. Uh... Don't worry about this. This is, this is. Uh, we'll do this in another lab. So don't worry about the extra credit there. But yeah, we're building a basically a small combat game. Um, the game associated would be Combat Atari 2600. So here we go. This is this is what we are simulating right now what we're building. And I don't know how he shot. I don't know. It's glitchy. This game was always a little bit glitchy. But here we go. 
Yeah, that's weird. But here we go. This is what we're we're essentially building at the moment. Oh, he hits. Okay. Anyways. Anyways, that's what we're building right now. And this will be will be will be revisiting this over the next um, literally ne next four labs. So f this one, lab seven, lab eight, and lab nine, will be revisiting. We'll be revisiting um, the Plinko and your soccer game in later. I think lab it's either eight or it's either eight or nine that we will revisit them, and we'll bring in HUD pieces essentially. So there's there's a lot more that we'll be doing, and then we will make a small mini uh, game package out of all the, the, Plin the Plinko machine, the combat uh, game, and the soccer game. Will become a, a package of a, we'll make a small application out of those three mini games, and that's essentially how we package all that up. Will be Lab Ten. So. We will be. This will be build. This is what we're going to be building on the on this for the next few weeks. When by the time you're done with this, like, hey, you can spawn things, you can destroy things, you can do this, you can do that. Um, again, those icons we're talking about. When you die, you're gonna your character is gonna drop a an icon of what it what what of something behind. Like the tank's gonna be a crater, and then the player is gonna drop yeah the the Yamcha. And then once you've gone through all of these, I mean, like in the next, you know, so we're talking at the next four, four, five weeks, by the end of this month, you'll know enough to build a small mini game on your own. That's actually your next assignment. After Lab 10, it's going to be a small mini game of your design, a small game of your design. Any other questions about what we needed to do? Um, I did move where the microphone is, so and it looks like I'm getting a better uh, uh, volume out of the microphone. It has been better. Did okay. So um, I, yeah. So um, tell yeah. Give me give me some feedback um, like in Discord. Uh, if, if the volume like is much better, much louder, please tell me. Any other questions about this assignment? All right. Um, again, we're going to be building upon this. Like next week, I believe is the raycast assignment. Like we 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 you saw me write a ray, perform raycast function. That's next week. We're going to go over raycasting next week. Uh, we'll f come back. We'll finish things off with lab lab eight. Do HUDs. Any other questions before I stop the recording? All right.